This video explains how to use Rockwell Automation's device libraries in Factory Top View Studio. Use these methods with either Factory Top View Site Edition or Machine Edition, and for Panel View Plus, HNI applications. The instructions in this video assume that you are already familiar with the basics of Factory Top View Studio, and you have already configured your controller code and Factory Top Link server. Now let's get started. To begin, import all of the required files from the library into your project simply by using drag and drop. First add in all of the images from the HMI Factory Top View Images file folder. At any point while importing content, if you are prompted to replace or skip any components, it's usually best to replace and select Yes to All. Then depending on whether you have a Machine Edition or Site Edition project, open either the HMI Factory Top View ME or SE folder accordingly. Inside you will find folders for both global objects and display files. Import all of the contained files into the graphics folder in Factory Talk View Studio. For some libraries like the I.O. device library, there may also be a tags.csv file in a library's root folder. This is required to help with faceplate navigation for objects that don't require add-on instructions. In Factory Talk View Studio, navigate to the Tools menu in the top toolbar and click on the Tag Import and Export wizard. Set the operation to import Factory Talk View tag CSV files. Then select your current project's SED file and browse for the provided CSV file. Okay, now you have everything you need to use the library. To allow operators to open the device faceplate displays, you can use the provided graphic symbols as launch buttons. In the Global Objects folder, open the Graphic Symbols file. Here you may notice different options for graphic symbols, from simple text buttons to graphical representations of the hardware, which can be used on system or network schematics. Choose the graphic symbol you want to use and copy it from this Global Objects screen onto a display. Right-click on the object and select Global Object Parameter Values. This is where you will connect the button to your controller tag. In most cases, for device objects which have add-on instructions, there are four parameters that can be configured. The first parameter is mandatory and is the add-on instruction backing tag. Browse for the instance of the device AOI tag in your logics controller. The second parameter is optional to provide a custom button label. If you leave this blank, it will read the tag's description property from the controller. You may want to customize this to shorten it or make it something that an operator can easily understand. Parameters 3 and 4 can be used to define the faceplate display's X and Y coordinates when it opens. These are optional in case you want to make sure the faceplate display opens at a specific location on the screen. For some device objects that do not have add-on instructions like the I.O. device library, you will see different parameters. In this case, you will need to set the first parameter to the name of the correct faceplate display file. Next, there will be parameters for the module's input tag, and in some cases, additional module tags for outputs, configuration, or other specific tags. Browse your controller tags to find the right one. There may also be configuration parameters, like setting the I.O. class. Lastly, there are the optional parameters for XI coordinates. Continue this process as many times as needed to configure all of your device graphic symbols. For quick results, consider using Studio 5000 Application Code Manager to set up your project and automatically configure all of the graphic symbols. You can now run your project. Keep in mind that you won't be able to open a faceplate display from another display when running in test mode, so it's best to check your work in a runtime client. Your operators now have access to everything they need, from commissioning and monitoring devices to troubleshooting faults and even advanced diagnostics like predictive maintenance indicators, energy consumption data, and more. Check out all of our device library videos for more information and tutorials and download all of these libraries for free today from Rockwell Automation's Download Center at rockwellautomation.com.